it is still the spooky season and I know a lot of people are still enjoying their horror, creepy, scary books. Happy for you. I'm still in a sentimental mood though. I, I really can't help looking back and rewinding, revisiting my 2023 reading experience. And you know what? Interestingly, I found one thing very concerning, very alarming, which distresses me. And I thought, maybe this is my horror. I'm almost too stunned and in such disbelief that I can't even say it out loud. I haven't read a poetry book yet for 2023. For someone who aspires to be a poet, and someone who's claiming to be a lover of poetry for her entire life, I will let a year pass by without reading a poetry book? Not that I've already been here for a long time, not really, but at the very least, I committed to not letting a year pass by ever since I started this booktube channel, to not let a year pass by without reading a poetry book. Last year. I've read a significant number of poetry books, and 2023 is already about to close, and I still haven't read one yet. Make it make sense. And we are about to go on a short vacation trip to Vegan. It's my mom's 60th birthday, and I thought I should take a poetry book. So of course, I've taken a look at my shelf, and there's no question, this is the perfect book to pick up. Mascarat. Pambata Malatulang Buhay by Edgar Calabia Summer. Why don't we read this together? May mga ala-ala ang higit pa sa ala-ala. May mga kritisismo, hindi naman talaga kritisismo. At may mga tulang malatulang buhay na hinaharap ang mga ito bilang mga maskarang nagpapakilala bilang dayuhan sa sariling bayan o bilang pambatang sentimentong gaya ng sumasabog na pag-ibig sa gitna ng mga digmaan. Mga tula ito ng paninibugho sa sariling nagdaan na hindi na mababalikan o hindi na ibig balikan sapagkat ayaw na muling iwan. Support Filipino Poets, Filipino Writers.
currently at Starbucks Vegan and I can't believe that here's where I'm gonna find the pumpkin spice latte. Here in Vegan. Wow. That's my sister buying it for us, treating us. I'm with my siblings walking at Kage Crystal. day here at Wigan and the hotel we're staying at absolutely impressive excellent customer service Ciudad Fernandina highly recommend I'm also on my second pumpkin spice wrap <laughs> I'm enjoying this too and of course I'm nearly done with mascara pambata I'll definitely finish I will wrap up this book before we, we go. <laughs> I'll, I have more thoughts. I'll, I'll talk about this later. And we're back in Manila. 
we had a very memorable, unforgettable time in Wigan. And I, I just hope and wish that my mom also had a good memory for her 60th birthday. Love you, mom. To be completely honest, it's actually several days already since our return. I genuinely thought that the first thing I'm gonna do upon arrival is to talk about my thoughts about this poetry collection. And something happened. Something happened. I'm gonna talk about that story in a bit as I talk about my thoughts. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to be more concise, consistent, and cohesive to this being my pick for the spooky season, right? I decided that I would talk about things and realizations that I had about me and fear and the reading experience in general. First thing, I realize that I am scared to admit how openings of books are something that I consider very critically important in my perception of the reading experience. I say that because I'm aware. I'm aware that we shouldn't really judge a book by its first line, by its first paragraph, first chapter. Perhaps some people would think not even the first half, although there's a whole talk and discussion about that uh, when it comes to DNFing books, which is something I'm trying, trying to learn because I know that it's being perceived as something healthy uh, in order for you not to waste your time. I know that. I'm trying to learn that. I probably did that once, twice before, but I haven't really embraced that habit. I'm, I'm having difficulty doing that, but I would like to do so. But yeah, um, openings of books are so strikingly important for me. And I say that because Mascara at Pambata had a very mind-blowing opening. The first poem, the first line, I'll read it to you and... The title of the first poem is Ang Salarin, and the first line goes like this. Tatlo na ang napaslang ko, bago pa man ako natutong pumatay. <laughs> I literally had to pause. Close the book and pause. And look at my surroundings, because I couldn't believe the irony, the coincidence that I pick this poetry collection book as uh, something to read for the spooky season. And it's that creepy? And it's that disturbing? Yes, a lot of the pieces here are very, very unsettling. <laughs> now circling back, right? So the reason why I, I talk about how important mind-blowing beginnings are for me as a reader is because uh, in the middle of the book, one of the poems Reads like this. Iyon ang ibig kong gawin sa kamatayan, hindi managinip. Madilim na along lumalampas sa mga salita. Bawiin ang mas mapanghahawakang bangungot. Sumisibol ang hindik sa pusong pinilipit, pinipilit mga laga ng mga elementong imahinaryo ang kalakhan, mitolohiya ng syudad na inabando na, at ligalig ng pamayan ng mahigpit ang kapis sa isa't isa. Edgar Calabia Samar really thought of this poetry collection book so well, so thorough. <laughs> Which brings me to my next realization. I'm terrified in both a wonderful and bittersweet way of writers who are simultaneously great poets and also great storytellers. <laughs> Edgar Calabia Summer is well known for John Asila, right? As for me, my first awareness of him was Walang diwata ng pagkahulog, which I've been yearning. I've been desperate to secure a copy of. I still don't have it right now. But I know that he's really critically acclaimed as a storyteller. And my first introduction to him is his poetry collection and his this good. I can really feel. I can definitely feel. You know how in some fiction stories, uh, I can tell that the writing is very poetic. So I can say that perhaps the, uh, the author is... A poet, I felt that Edgar Calabia Samar is an exceptional storyteller. And every piece that I've read here, I keep on thinking, this is why, this is why his stories are so loved. Now, why am I terrified of this kind of writers, you ask? Because honestly, I'm so incredibly jealous of them. 
in particular, Filipino poets and storytellers. I'm so jealous. Envious. <laughs> I want to be them so bad. Now, this is why uh, when I started reading this book, I decided that this made me think a lot of Libing Isa. This is not really a poetry collection, but it's a graphic novel short story collection. And it's done in a very poetic manner. And I, I thought, I decided I would take this book along with me to begin. So I brought along these two books during the travel, right? Incredibly jealous. <laughs> Incredibly jealous, envious of their skills. I want to be them so bad. <laughs> this is so ridiculously off-tangent, but um, last year, I think in one of my reading vlogs, I may not have talked about it, but I indicated that I'm attempting to write to write a novel, right? Uh, I'm not going to talk much about it, but what I can say for sure right now, it's truly an up and down journey. <laughs> I'm not yet done. I'm not even halfway through. Uh, but what I can say for sure is one of the moments that I cried about in the process of writing that book was because of my inability to write it in pure Filipino, in pure Tagalog. That was initially what I wanted, but I couldn't. I couldn't. So the Filipino poets and storytellers, thank you so much for proving that it's possible. Masterpieces can be done in pure Filipino. Tagalog. Tinawag siyang makata dahil sa maling bayan siya isinilang. Hindi niya maunawaan ang binibitawang salita ng mga tao sa paligid. Kapag may binig ka siya, iba rin ang dating sa nakikinig. Noon siya nagpa siya. Huli na ito. So I think it's only proper right now to tell you about the story a bit, right? What exactly happened? <laughs> um, we arrived in Manila, right? We arrived home and I unpacked my stuff. I, I don't even know how to make sense of what has happened because the books, I lost them. I lost them. I, I, I have this suspicion that I left it at the bus, probably at the terminal, the bus station. I, I truly don't know. <laughs> and I don't want to dwell on it so much anymore because I would be just so heartbroken. I lost the two books. Any, any hopes of finding it somewhere along my bags? <laughs> the books are gone. Yes, I repurchased these two books. So these are already my second copies of these books. <laughs> and I read them both again to tab them up again. Somewhere in Manila, I still keep on thinking up until today, someone, I hope, found those books and considered them valuable. I hope they are readers, or if not, I hope they will come to learn the happiness of reading. A lot is going on in the world right now. It's hard to even decide where to begin. It's hard to discuss and it's times like these when it's so easy to feel that we are not just incapable, but that we don't have a right to talk about our feelings anymore. Pinaaalala ng mapa ang daigdig na wala roon. Ang alam ko lang ay ang nasa tula. Huwag sukatin na ang halimaw sa pamantayan at anyo ng tao. Pinapas lang ng kwento sa isip ang nangyayari sa pahina. I hope that the things that we discover about things that we're afraid about, scared about, things about fear that we are learning about ourselves are also steps towards us learning how to be brave, how to get more courage. There's my next reading vlog where... I am continuing to pursue this, so see you there. Thank you so much for watching.